Today we've got a crazy story of revenge getting back at a narcissistic mom. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, my petty sister stole my wedding gown. I cannot think of anything worse that has happened to me than what my sister did to me just a week before my wedding. As a child, I've always dreamed of my wedding day, and as someone who's crazy about fashion and has always been, my wedding dress was the highlight of my fantasies. It changed according to times and periods, but each time I designed a dress, it was always magnificent and just perfect for me. My sister and I didn't grow up together. We knew about each other, but we didn't even get to meet until we were seven and eight. My dad had her with his mistress at the time, a blonde model who had failed at everything. Well, that was what my mom called her, the woman who had failed at everything. My mom hated the woman, naturally. Who wouldn't? It was so bad that my mom got panic attacks from just going to a party and seeing her. My parents met when my dad was in his early 40s and my mom was in her late 20s. Dad had money to throw around and he seduced women with it. My mom, who was a modest Christian woman who worked in a bank, was one of those women. My dad had met her at the bank one day and casually told her that he was going to marry her. Many months later, she allowed him to take her out for dinner. My mom was impressed and my dad made sure of it. All of her reservations about marrying a man that older flew out of the window when she saw how sweet, kind, and of course, generous my dad was. Her parents were shocked that my mom was going to marry for money. They refused to believe that there was any other reason my mom would marry my dad. Also, daddy wasn't a Christian or even remotely religious. Her parents kicked against the idea, but my mom's mind was made up. She was going to marry daddy. Her parents eventually had to respect her decision. Daddy and my mom got married within a year of meeting each other, and that was the beginning of trouble for my mom. She thought that by marrying a man who was a lot older, she wasn't going to have to deal with the infidelity that younger men are known for. But she was wrong. My dad cheated on my mom and it was mostly always with one woman, my sister's mom. My mom stubbornly refused to leave the marriage and stayed with my dad despite him openly being in a relationship with another woman. My mom had me in the third year of their marriage and soon after, my dad's girlfriend had a baby too. My mom heard about this, of course, but somehow she could not believe it was my dad's baby. Well, not until he had confessed to her that he had impregnated his girlfriend. My mom told me that she knew that day that she had to divorce my dad. Not really because she wanted to, but because she was worried about what people would think of her if she stayed with a man who blatantly disrespected her the way my dad did. Just as she started secretly talking to a lawyer about what she could get in the event of a divorce, She had quit her job at the bank immediately after marrying my dad. My dad did the honors and told her that he wanted a divorce. My mom was hysterical. Yes, she had wanted to divorce, but the fact that he was doing it first badly hurt her. They continued to live together while the divorce was in the works, and all through that period, my mom acted like a crazy woman. She would chase my old father around the house with a kitchen knife, slap him, and threaten to end him in his sleep. He got my mom arrested and she was removed from their house. They did get a divorce, but my dad didn't part with much because he had nailed her with her violent behaviors. She also didn't get custody, so my dad played single dad and took care of me at that age. We never had a nanny around, he did everything himself. Do you know one thing I've learned about this world? It's that the world is very forgiving of men. My dad was the jerk, the cheat who had ruined my mom's life but all he had to do to redeem himself and his image was be a present father. Even I, who learned about what had happened as I grew, readily forgave him. I knew I had a sister somewhere, she knew about me too, but since my dad and her mom had long broken up and they didn't live in town, we never met. We met when our parents started dating again. One could simply not deny that my dad was madly in love with that woman. He adored her and she loved him too. I met my sister when the two adults arranged lunch. I remember being very upset because I felt the new girl was trying to take my dad away. My dad went from spending all his free time looking after me and doing fun things together to going to see the new girl. He also hired a sitter to watch me while he was away. Now that I'm old enough to fully understand what was happening, I guess all those times my dad mentioned my sister's name and said he was going to see her, what was really happening was that he was going to see her mother. I didn't get that of course. I was young and fearful. Thankfully my mom returned and went to court to see if she could get full custody of me. The court denied her that, but she was allowed to share custody with my dad. 
At the time, my dad and that woman were finally taking their relationship seriously. She moved in with us and, of course, with my sister. The first week of them moving in was hard for me. I had to accept the fact that I was going to share my dad's attention and love with them, and I hated it. I hated my dad's girlfriend, but I hated my sister even more. I wished I was younger and smaller than she was. That way I would be the family's baby, but instead, I was an older sister and was constantly reminded to act like it by my dad. My mom had remarried and was more interested in having a relationship with her husband's children. Maybe that was why she never tried to establish any kind of below-surface relationship with me. Or maybe she had just given up on us. My dad, despite his business and the fact that I had to share him with two others, was still the parent who was mostly there for me, especially emotionally. My sister, on the other hand, had her mother's love, her older brothers, and my dad's. It was unfair. I'm not telling this background story to excuse all I did. That isn't what this is at all. I just wish everyone will understand why I did what I did and what inspired my actions. My sister was quite reserved. You could hardly ever tell what was on her mind. She had just one friend nearly all her life, an outgoing, beautiful girl. They were so close, they told each other nearly everything. I had friends too, many of them in fact. But I always nursed the fear that my friends didn't really like me. I felt they only liked me because I was pretty and popular and my dad had some money. My friends were always fighting about something. Someone always tried to take someone's girlfriend and we were constantly fighting over which guy liked which girl and which girl is not allowed to date which guy. We also bonded a lot over our boyfriends cheating on us. The point is, there was so much drama and chaos going on, but my sister had so much peace in her life. She was dating someone on the basketball team and he never even cheated. That was so rare. I felt cheated. Why couldn't it be me and wholesome friendships dating a guy who genuinely cared about me and having two parents who loved me? It felt like she stole my life. My life was good before she came into it anyway. I hardly saw my mom, but I had my dad. When we were in senior year, I overheard her friend telling her about something that had happened with her past her parents. Her mom suspected that her dad had been cheating on her with a guy from work. My friend was very upset. And rightly so. It was a scandalous story. I am ashamed of what I did now, but when I heard it, I was happy. My sister's friend had always acted like she was perfect, and it gladdened my heart that she wasn't so perfect after all. The next day, I told nearly everyone about it. Our school was a small private school, so everyone knew everyone. Not only did she hang her head in shame for months, she stopped speaking to my sister because she thought my sister told everyone about it. My sister was devastated. She cried about it for a very long time. One day, we argued. I wore a necklace that belonged to her and I lost it in school. We fought and, in my anger, I told her that it was me who told everyone what her friend had told her. She attacked me physically and beat me up. I was older and bigger, but she was strong and athletic. My dad was very mad at her when he returned. I also got my mother to call him and yell at him. She was grounded for weeks, and I didn't pass on any chance to make fun of her for it. I also wore dramatic band-aids to school and told everyone she attacked me. People avoided her in school, well, nearly everyone, because her stupid friend came back and they were friends again. We soon went off to college and hardly saw each other anymore, except on breaks and holidays. We still weren't friends. I still hated her and was secretly jealous of her, and she still had her boyfriend from high school and her best friend too. I on the other hand went from best friend to best friend. They all either slept with my boyfriend or I slept with theirs. One break, I had just returned from hanging out with two of my friends from high school. All we did was brag about who had the best major, whose boyfriend loved her the most, and who had the coolest car. We also talked about our other friends who didn't have these things. I returned home tired and frustrated. I no longer wanted friends like that. My dad and his wife weren't home when I returned. My sister wasn't too, but her boyfriend told me that the two women had taken my dad to the hospital. My dad had suffered a partial stroke, and he was recovering at the time. Her boyfriend was in the kitchen, reading a newspaper and waiting for my sister to return. I walked up to him and started kissing him. He pushed me away, looking at me in horror. I apologized and muttered something about liking him since high school. Surprisingly, he kissed me back. 
That was probably one of the most shocking experiences I have ever had. We all knew him to be faithful and fully dedicated to my sister. I had expected him to walk away and leave me feeling embarrassed, but I'd be used to it. It wasn't the first time my seduction plan had failed. He grabbed me and kissed me like he'd been wanting to do that for a very long time. Maybe he had. Before we could get a hold of ourselves, my sister walked in. I saw her, but her boyfriend didn't. He was too engrossed in what he was doing. I tried to pull myself away from his hold, but he held me back. It wasn't until I violently pushed him away that he noticed that we had an audience. This time, it was my sister and her mom. My sister walked away from the scene and her boyfriend tried to follow her, but her mom sent him out. She looked at me like I was the dirtiest thing in the world and went upstairs to her daughter. Years later, I met someone and we started making plans to get married. I was excited. I finally got to have a family of my own. They were going to be my people. Since my dad and maybe his girlfriend were going to be there, I felt it was important to invite my sister too. I wanted to apologize to her for what had happened, to seduce her to forgive me. I included her in the wedding. She was going to be one of my bridesmaids. When I informed her, she agreed and admitted that she hadn't expected an invitation. She lived in the city while I still lived in our house with my dad and his girlfriend. The week before my wedding, she came home and looked happy to see me. She still looked perfect, everyone loved her and was dating a football star at the time. I still felt a little pang of jealousy. Since she was so happy to see me, I figured she had long forgiven and forgotten about what had happened. The next day, my dress came in. Like I said earlier, I was very invested in having a beautiful wedding dress. I may be an imperfect person, but my dresses were always perfect and I intended for my wedding dress to floor everyone. My mom and my dad's girlfriend tried to convince me to go with me to shop for a wedding dress, both tried separately of course, but I refused. I was going to have my dress custom made by a known designer. We designed the dress together and he decided what fabrics would go with what parts. I had gone for the first fitting the month before and I already looked forward to it being delivered. When it came and I tried it on, my dad nearly cried. It was simply gorgeous. Even my sister had commented on how lovely it was. That was one of my proudest moments. I felt loved and seen by everyone in my family. I pictured myself in my dress on my wedding day and looked forward to it. My wedding was on a Sunday. The Wednesday of that week, I went in to check out my dress, but it wasn't there. I almost fainted. I screamed and everyone in the house came around. We could not find the dress. My sister was the only one who wasn't home. She had spent the night at her best friend's. She called her mother to later to inform her that she had to travel for work. I knew then that she took it. I called her many times and left many messages begging her to please return my gown. She hardly took my calls, but the few times that she did, she would laugh at me. My friends checked her social media and saw that she had uploaded a picture of her friend in the dress and announced that she was selling it. She didn't just steal it from me, she was selling it off and making money. We tried very hard to convince her. She even stopped taking her mom's calls. I had to rush to a shop to rent, we couldn't afford to buy, an incredibly ugly wedding dress. I still can't believe that my calm and collected sister would take revenge in such a petty way. Did nobody think to call the cops here? I mean, they had literal visual proof that they had stolen this wedding gown that I'm sure probably qualifies maybe for grand theft. That said, our next story is how my sister and I got back at our abusive and narcissistic mother. It was a Friday afternoon and my mom's retirement party was to be that night. I took one look at the invitation again. It was a bright blue hard paper with the wordings typed in pink. My mom had worked in a church nearly all her life and the entire church knew her as an upstanding righteous secretary. Celebration of an icon had read, I was sure that one of my mom's co-workers had written that. Most likely a senior colleague because a junior colleague or co-worker would have been on the receiving end of her abuse. My mom was just great at sucking up to people from whom she could benefit something. I dressed my daughter in a beautiful cream-colored dress and decorated her hair with colored ribbons. My husband had gotten dressed and was waiting for us downstairs. I called my sister and asked if she was ready, and she was. On that note, I held my daughter's hand and we strolled down and drove to the church where the event was to be held. 
I felt a tight knot in my stomach as my husband drove us. I hoped that I wouldn't get sick. You will be fine, my husband assured me quietly. I managed a small smile and thanked my stars again for the gift of my husband. It took me two years of therapy to be able to attract and keep a good man like my darling husband. I believed for so long that I was undeserving of love, and my sister and I, for a very long time, dated jerk after jerk. After my sister's second divorce in three years, she called me and said, Baby, something is broken in us that we need to fix. That statement was the beginning of going to therapy for us. She spoke to a colleague at the university where she taught and he recommended a good therapist. She saw her first for three months, then she invited me for a sister session that eventually ran for months. I decided to take up therapy too and paid for individual sessions. My life became all the better for it. As we pulled into the church, I saw my sister just in front of the church. She didn't look as nervous as I did. My sister had always been more confident than me. She was calculated and could be cold and mean too. I was very sure as a teenager that she would grow into the exact kind of woman that our mother is. And she did grow up and became very hostile. She was hostile to me and her two ex-husbands. I don't know what it was. It wasn't therapy because the change occurred even before then. Perhaps it was her second divorce or maybe she had an epiphany then but it made her determined to fix her hostility. And she did. She didn't only manage to fix the anger that at some point looked like it was an inborn feature, but she also managed to become the most amazing wife, friend, and sister to me, and a great stepmother to her stepsons. I walked up to her husband and hugged him while my husband said hello to her, our child in his arms, she had fallen asleep. We exchanged pleasantries and allowed the men to go into church while we waited to talk to each other. Are you ready? My sister asked, looking at me studiously. I feel sick, I replied, clutching my stomach. But I am ready, I added. She held my hand. Come on, let's go in. The church was filled with very familiar faces. Some were vaguely familiar and others were people I knew well. We had attended church as children and teenagers. I had in fact sung in the choir. I was a lot more interested in religious activities than my sister was. I looked up at the front pew and there she was. My mother, dressed in royal purple skirts and blazers, her shiny dark hair straightened to her shoulders. My mom had great hair, and my sister and I and even my daughter had gotten that from her. Immediately she saw my sister and me. She excused herself from the man she was talking to, a man I remember to be the pastor of the church, and came over to where we were. Hello darlings, she said out loud loud enough for those around her to notice her welcoming her children. Hi mother, my sister replied. The sarcasm in her voice was obvious. Hi mom, I greeted. My mom smiled at me as though I was the good kid who had chosen to be respectful. Usually I was. Don't embarrass me, my mom said in a low voice. It reminded me of when we were younger and she would say this. She said this when we went to the court during my parents' custody battle. She said this whenever we went to church and when important guests were visiting. She would always warn us not to embarrass her. To my mom, the worst thing that could ever happen was for her to be embarrassed and her image tainted before the people she was bent on impressing. Nothing was more important to her than keeping a pristine reputation. And that was why my sister and I had chosen to honor her invitation. We were not going to allow people to keep believing that she was a perfect mother in person. As usual, the program started with an opening prayer, followed by a special rendition by the church choir. The choir director, a man who I'd known most of my life, gave a glowing opening speech about my mom, praising her to the high heavens. As he spoke, I watched my mom's face, a gentle smile on her face. It was what she loved the most, praises from people. At the end of his speech, she stood and gave him a big hug. My stomach tightened as I watched the exchange and I winced in pain. My husband was busy talking to my sister's husband and trying to hold my daughter still. He didn't notice my discomfort. My sister noticed and held my hand. I had always lived in fear of my mother. What we were going to do frightened me. I imagined the look of disapproval on her face. Growing up, nothing terrified me more than my mom's anger or disapproval. While therapy had helped with most of that, I hadn't confronted my mom even after my therapist had told me that it was important to do that. Are you nervous? My sister asked in a whisper, eyeing me. I'll speak, okay? I nodded and managed to smile, but I was still very uncomfortable. 
Soon enough, the time came and the pastor announced that my mom's daughters were going to give a speech. My sister stood immediately. It was almost like she'd been prepared for it all her life, as though the moment she was waiting for had finally come. I tried to get up, but the knot in my stomach felt so heavy that I fell back in my chair. My husband placed his hand on mine and squeezed it. Honey, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. We could just leave, he said. I shook my head and got up with a renewed determination. As we walked up to the podium, I wondered if we were making a big mistake. As soon as we faced the church from the podium, I glanced at my mom where she was seated and saw her glare warningly at my sister. I was pissed. It's been years since my sister and I ran from home, but she still had that glare. How dare she look at us like that? My sister started with the usual church's praise God, but just as she was about to speak, I took the microphone from her and started to talk. My sister hadn't expected me. I saw the shock on her face that she tried to conceal when I took it from us. My sister is two years older than me. Growing up, she was the rebel and I was the dove. I constantly sought my mom's approval on everything, while she defied my mom too many times, disregarding the consequences that came with disobeying our mother. You are all gathered here to celebrate a kind woman, someone who has dedicated her life to the church, and too caring for the members of the church. You all know this woman as a loving person, a preacher of the love that is God, a good woman. If this woman could show such kindness and graciousness to people in the church and even strangers outside the church, as some people have pointed out, imagine the extent of her kindness to us, her children. As I said this, I saw my mother smile and put on a somber face. She wasted so many years of her life in the wrong career, I thought. She should have been an actress. She would have made a fine one. Sadly, the version of my mother that is kind, caring, loving, honest, and true was not the version that we, my sister and I, got to see. Outside the home, she was flowers and sunshine, but when she returned home, she was a beast, a terribly abusive mother. Most people looked on in shock, but some gasped. My husband smiled at me from the church audience and mouthed, well done, raising his thumbs. I went on to tell the church about how she treated us as children and why we left home. When I felt I'd said enough, the knot on my tummy tightened even harder. This time it worked its way faster around my stomach, found its way into my throat, and came out as vomit. The church gasped as I vomited on the podium. My husband rushed up and helped me outside, leaving our daughter to my brother-in-law and sister. We drove home quietly and my sister and her husband met us at our home. I cannot believe that you spoke for that long and nobody tried to take the microphone from you, she said. I washed my face and showered. My husband was cleaning my clothes and had put our daughter to bed. My sister and I hugged and then sat on the couch to gauge the extent of the damage we'd done to my mom. My mom was crazy about her reputation. God forbid that someone thought of her as a bad person, or worse, a bad mother, especially when she was the first to judge other mothers for being bad mothers. I think we did a whole lot of damage, my sister said, patting me on the back. Knowing my mother, she would have invited all the people she respected and would have wanted to impress at the event. And letting those people know what kind of terrible human she was, was priceless. My sister and I had been surprised when three months before, my mom rang my sister's office and invited her to her retirement party. The day after she rang my sister's office, she called me and invited me to the event too. We were surprised that she was inviting us, but more than that, we were angry. She had never shown up for us when we needed her, but she suddenly needed to look good to certain people, and she was suddenly inviting us not to just grace her event with our presence, but also to give a glowing speech about her. She was so arrogantly deluded that she expected that we would give a great speech in her favor. Having the kind of mother, I had nearly ruined my life. I'm only glad that I chose to fix my life and do better by myself and my daughter. My mother had my sister when she was 17. Her parents were very angry about what had happened, but they let her keep the baby and took care of the mother and child. She fled the state her parents lived in with my sister and eloped with my sister's father, who was only 18 at the time. Whilst they lived together, she got pregnant again by his neighbor and had me. My sister's father had been so angry when he found out that she was cheating, he threw her out of his house. 
She moved into the neighbor's house, but he soon ran away, leaving her to take care of two young children. For months, she went from church to church where they took care of her and us. One day, she left the state for a different state, got a job at a local church, and was able to afford rent and food. My mom was not just emotionally abusive, she was physically abusive as well. In our preteen years, she constantly hit us, especially my sister. She threw objects at us at the slightest provocation, but when she was around other people, she would treat us nicely. She was the symbol of purity and honesty in church. With her story about having two children with two different men and turning around to find God and repair her life, she had an audience in the church. And every other month, she would be invited to talk to young women and girls about avoiding premarital sex. Not only was she a terrible mother, but she was also a hypocrite too. She went to church and pretended to be pristine, but she was having an affair with the church's pastor, who was very much married. The affair went on for a very long time, until she started threatening to expose the affair because he wouldn't leave his wife. He left the church and a new pastor was appointed, and she started an affair with him as well. While she was having different affairs, we weren't even allowed to speak to boys. My mother never even tolerated my sister and me wearing lip gloss. She would flip. She punished us in different ways. We either didn't get our allowances, or she'd lock the fridge so we couldn't eat. When my sister got a college scholarship, I was too scared to stay back with my mother. I ran away with my sister and my mother never bothered to contact us. When we eventually spoke to her, my sister and I reached out to her first. She called us ungrateful and managed to guilt trip us into having a relationship with her. Even though we no longer lived with her, she continued to abuse us emotionally. She would tell us that we won't amount to anything and promise that we'd fail. Sometimes when we didn't have any money, we would call to ask for money and she would mock us, send us some money, and tell anyone who cared to listen that she was still supporting her children. Getting back at my mother in that way was the best thing ever because cutting her off could never have been sufficient. I think what I love most about this revenge is she felt obligated to have to have their children there. I bet if she had a real choice, she wouldn't have invited her own daughters, but because the optics of that is terrible, she could have at least said, oh, well, I invited them, but they didn't show up. They were probably hoping that OP and their sister didn't show up. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another crazy revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.